Hello everybody, what's good, what's good? Uh, so yeah, I just, uh, I just did wait, I see me I do this live before I start to the radio. I guess show today, I'm live in Minneapolis, you know. And before I start this refinement, refinery saga, this is not about refinement of petrol alone. This refinery saga, you know, when I meditate on them, the ancestors open my eye to understand, say, that the entirety of our society in lack refinement. You know, because refinement comes with development. You understand me? Without development, a society cannot be refined. So, whether not petrol, no, whether not human being, no, whether not, we don't feel refine anything because we never develop. We have replaced development with modernization. You know, modernization a way for Uyibo people and our rich people to stay rich. So they modernize, buy, buy and sell, buy and sell, build and buy and sell, buy and sell. So everything is for sale in the name of modernization. But we know we lack the development what we need for true refinement. And that is the real problem with Dangote refinery. See, the society ma is not refined. So why you want to do refinery without development? You understand? Uh-huh. So we are going to go into that. I'm going to break it down. It's really quick. You know, in the course of this our development, you know, I realize the one thing we are the way people don't understand. When we talk about our relationship with Europeans and their need to continue to exploit and exterminate African people, you know, in a way, people think that we they make them up, that we said it. You know, I never really bring them on that aspect. But maybe I, ha- I have one time where I've been to read the thoughts of European philosophers. You know, so. And I want to say these things where I won't read to now are things that are still being taught in their universities. These philosophers are still held in high esteem in European society. Europeans all over the world, you call some of them Americans, you call some of them Australians, you call some of them South Americans, you call some of them. Can you still hear me? I've been get called, but uh, I hope say never. I hope they never hang this. Uh, we need the color. Why are seven eight five? No verse. Uh, may I let you come up for this live? May you go protest. Go plan your protest. How you did live? Eh? Oh, my life don't hang. May I come back? Can you hear me now? Uh-huh. Okay, good, good. Sorry, I've been getting phone call. You know, my wife been the try to call me. She didn't say I did live. So she should find me. You know. So somebody here see me cannot talk me. I go do protest. So I don't come out time for the live. Now why I can't do this live outside? Why not just stay inside my room to do this live? Balance for couch. Eh? Why do I like hard life like this? Uh, so I realized, say maybe now we, you know, maybe people believe, say we are just speaking our own words. You know, uh, let me read from uh, Paul Rushback. He had a best-selling. Thank you so much. Thank you, Johnny. He had a best selling novel and he's a German philosopher. The name of the book was called German Thoughts in the World. This book was written in 1912. You know, uh, uh, and it was at that time, he was also the head of German immigration in Southwest Africa. You know, and the philosophy he had was 
no false philanthropy or racial theory can convince sensible people that the preservation of the tribe of South Africa's Kafirs is more important to the future of mankind than the spread of the great European nations and the white race in general. Not until the native learns to produce anything of value in the service of the higher race, that is the service of it and its own progress, does he gain any moral right to exist. This was said in 1912. See, not until the native learns to produce anything of value in the service of the higher race, that is, in the service of it and its own progress, does he gain any moral right to exist. Now, the higher race is just basically what, are they, what is he saying? That those that produce things for their own progress, that those that produce things for their own progress, uh, this is 2024. Our elites have made sure that we don't produce anything for our own progress. So what does that mean? We don't have any moral right to exist. Our termination is justified. And I'm not kidding. Like, it goes right through European thought. Right through. Like, every one of them that I read you know listen li look at this again listen to this anyone looking more deeply will see that the European assaults really only intensify on already existing evil in peoples with little culture there are inner forces of destruction that are released for the slightest reason their decline can therefore not be seen only as a result of attacks by more advanced peoples. No, those with little culture have fundamentally passive characters. They seek to endure rather than overcome the circumstances that are reducing their numbers. Contact with Europeans simply hastens an extinction already on the way. Many people at lower cultural levels have died out for internal reasons with no assault from the outside. Thus, Russell has come from full circle. Okay, no, that's just what comes after. But you see what they say? Many people at lower cultural levels have died out for internal reasons with no assault from outside. Basically, that they are just coming to save us from our lack of the progress. So, facing, facing such historical... Uh, let me read one very interesting one. Last one was quite interesting too. Captain Gordon Pym stated in his speech that it was a philanthropic principle to kill natives. There was, he said, mercy in a massacre. There's a philanthropic need. <laughs> oh my God. There's a philanthropic need. So, knowing, faced with these challenges, I believe personally that our biggest, uh, our biggest mission as a people must be our development, especially we that have nations in our control, right? We that have our own nations in our control our biggest mission will be our development because without our development to the world that we exist in it is justified to exterminate i mean look at what is happening in gaza look at what is happening in gaza right now you know so yeah development i believe is the refinement of society no 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 I don't need the tripod, baby. I'll soon be done. It's not a long one. You know, development is the refinement of society. You know, when we educate our children, we produce refined adults. We refine them into adulthood by educating them. So education is gonna refinement process, right? Education is the process we will take refine our children into adults. Right, none of that is done. Nobody cares about the refinement of our children in this.
idea of development, but we have state-of-the-art schools in our country. I repeat, for our country, we get state-of-the-art schools all over our country, but there's no refinement of our children. Nigeria cannot educate its children, even if some people have modernized education. Do you understand? We refuse to develop our educational system, but we have modernization in our educational system. I write this thing down here so I go read them as I write them so that I'll feel past the point I cross. Development is united and cohesive, but modernization is independent and individualistic. It is also divisive. It splits society. The divide between the haves and the have-nots is clearly outlined and also deepened And even among the classes itself, even among the classes themselves, modernization tends to bring undue competition because we are not in a development wow. idea. So what you are trying to tell you now, say, okay, if Dangote is complaining that some people in his class are sabotaging him from gaining the petrol he needs for his refinery, that means it is due to that lack of developmental unity. We don't have that unity of development. We are not looking to develop. It is Dangote's business. That's how the people in his class see it. They don't see him as, oh, we won't develop our country. This is a modernization effect. So this is somebody's business. There's no cohesive thought. So nobody see they plan them together, say, okay, Nigeria elites come together, say, yeah, we won't bring, begin make our own fuel, make fuel day for our people, make it day cheap, you know. So basically, what all this argument is going to boil down to be, say, this refinery is not going to reduce the price of petrol because it is not cohesive. There's no unity among the people in that class that should be able to make those things happen for Nigerians. It is the same division we we going to get among ourselves. There's no clear, because we're not developing. We are modernizing. You know, we are lacking the fundamentals of our development with the removal from the equation. So this government, politicians, business elite, gone, they can't come together except on exploitation. You know, except to exploit. You know, so there's no true plan. So okay, they, they had come together to agree on an agenda. If it's true that this refinery is for our development, it should be part of our agenda. We the government, the businessmen, everybody, but it is impossible because the petroleum sector is not developed. It's not developed. The crude way Nigeria gets on, safe. So, without the development and nationalization of Nigerian crude oil, first for Nigerian use, how can Dangote secure his own supply? If pipelines, they never develop the pipelines, if Nigeria never build their own pipelines, to put gas in, we are gas flaring in 2024, all over the country, gas flare, gas flare, 24 hours for Nigeria, they say they didn't gas flaring for 24 hours, people come they ask why Potakot is covered with black smoke, when they are gas flaring for 24 hours, people have made billions in the oil sector in Nigeria, they cannot develop it, they refuse to develop it by piping this gas into our homes when they use cylinder. Develop the sector, build this infrastructure. If these infrastructures were built, then go to Gofi, tap into the infrastructure easily to secure your own crude oil for national use. The crude oil with NMPC and all these companies they produce, they have sold it. See, Nigerians, look at the, you know, see, they sell labels, see, Nigeria produces so so and so barrels per day. All this thing is numbers. People have bought 10 years in advance, 20 years in advance. Many of these people have sold all the crude oil that they have 10, 15 years in advance. So where's that going to see crude oil from all those kind of people? There's no cohesive idea behind their development, behind their business. Because it is not part, it is part of their modernization. It's part of their own personal development. So we have all these people with their personal development, but they refuse, even though 
everything they have have come from our collective commonwealth i mean our commonwealth and our collectively owned resources so that is what they sell land and mineral resources finish So, what do we discuss when we want to discuss about? Um, hold on, guys, hold on. Johnny, are you guys going now? I'm not done, but. Of course, why not? Hey, baby, how are you? Don't worry, we'll be back home soon. I see you're doing nice. Look at you all fresh and ish. Oh yeah, go and meet your mommy. I'm on live. You no, know, it's a you want to win. If you don't bring Meda from Dubai next year, if you don't bring Meda, with all this your long, long leg, better train hard. Can you hear what your daddy has said? My case goes. You know. I I am I'm, I'm ashamed that a businessman can come outside now and be shouting up and down the place, you know, because his own friends are sabotaging him, as he claims, as he claims. Because me, as if he say all oh, this one are game to just they don't know how to tell all of us. See, that refinery is not going to reduce price of petrol. <laughs> I think that's the game here. <laughs> you know, so they're going to blame everybody and say, well, that's why we can't reduce the price, which we have to buy the petrol from abroad. But the truth is that there's no petrol to sell in Nigeria. You know. Uh, how many times don't go to truck, don't kill children? I never hear I'm come as I can't cry before, say, oh, I'm so sorry, these trucks, hey, all these drivers, they're just sabotaging me, all these drivers, they are sabotaging me, giving me bad. <laughs> because I mean I believe see, anytime that happens, he should give a statement. But they will say yeah, he's not the one in charge. Is independent country, they will be giving excuses. This is not about right or wrong, as I always say. It's life and death. So when such things have happened, it is human that the face of this name comes out and say, Oh, but well, we are not worthy. But now suddenly you know see, you know see Epo. They come outside, they run up and down, they cry, say something. Everybody said they follow I want I want Chihuahua. The Chihuahua crew. Eh? I will be. Eh? People without dignity. It's like they will come outside now. They, they cry up and down, cry up and down, cry up and down. Anyway, so our de the development of our society is the refinement of that of our society. Many of the things we see, you know, uh, if there was if there's justice, if our police people uh, enforce the law for us and our uh, justice system, you know, is fair. That is the refinement of the law, you know, into a system of legality, you know, and that can bring our economics. If it's refined, that will, if it's developed, if our economic is developed, that's what going to be. That's what that's what brings wealth and jobs. That's what a refined economy does. Because when you develop your economy, it becomes a refined economy. You become specialized. In things so nothing even our lives are not refined if our existence is not really refined meaning that they've extracted <laughs> they extracted development from every part of our existence then nothing that's why even our government if we refine petrol crude oil if our whole government a government representing 200 million people right. see the no thing we do refine crude oil claim that refineries must not work because they refuse to develop you know how can we claim that we uh, that there's a that one person cannot do it easily you know so all this one is just to let us know that they tell you now just brace yourself the price will not change significantly the price cannot change significantly that's what they're letting you know because that's the business they will want to end this foreign currency and put their money where they always put their money but they always tell people, say, is it a coincidence that everybody just packs all these billions and put it abroad 
I refuse to invest, develop. They always talk about investment. How can you invest in your own country? You must develop your country. So now they won't tell me, see, when I talk down, see, how can you tell them how to spend their money? Don't tell them how to spend their money. But now that they want to lose money, they now want us to help them. You want to talk, why should we, you want to lose money? If I can help you spend money, why are you talking to us when you lose money? Is your if both is, if, if it's your business when you make money, then it's your business when you lose money. Except we are all together in a cohesive agenda of development. And development is no means make person, you know by force that you make 10,000 naira profit every time. That's what is killing me in these people. Even in the cement business, is it wrong if Bangote make only one naira per profit per bag of cement to develop our country? Even at one naira profit per bag. Yes, what's wrong with that? Now you bring limestone from heaven. But no, everybody is making this stupendous profit, blaming things that reason that then cost them. They'll say diesel price go up. Who they make diesel price go up? Now me make diesel price go up. They say dollar price go up. Now me make dollar. Now me it consign me. Do I even have it? Which it consign with the people. The things the mistake we they make. The content of make with the sacrifice, make with the suffer. Yet government go to pack billions. They give them billions. Nine government they give all these people for Nigeria every year. Billions upon billions in tax break, in free money, in loan, they buy anyone, they turn the pack up. The food that they grow, they refuse to develop agriculture. There's no development in the agricultural sector. There's only modernization of the agricultural sector. A developed agricultural sector will give us, will feed the nation, will secure our uh, need, our our nutritional needs. But because now only modernization, they're just interested. We buy all those big, big, we buy all the latest seed. We must all this GM with the cause cancer. Any latest thing, they go down and buy and pull for them. Charging us the expensive prices for that instead of developing the industry to refine it. So we are in these people are incapable of refinement because they are incapable of development. Refinement and development go hand in hand. So no matter what you do, you must insist that we seek development from the people in charge of our nation, not their investment, not their charity. We don't want their charity, we don't want their investment. Our, the nation cannot be developed by investment. We can only develop it by development. That's why they call it develop. It has a word, develop. Investment is investment. Investment does not mean development. I say it all the time. A man comes out to invest in something, doesn't want to develop it. He wants to extract. Investment is a word for extraction, for exploitation. Because investment means, I say it all the time, put a little in and take a lot out. He wants to put a little in and take a lot out. So we need a total... With everything in our country needs to be refined. And I'm happy. See, people they vest, say one person no feel refine crude oil. So if we can be that angry about one person not able to refine crude oil, yes, I agree. Say crude oil makes things hard for people with the middle class and upper class and people with the go work and all those. But there are a lot of people we don't even engage for this, we don't even buy phone, we don't even get bank accounts. They say only 48% of Nigerians get bank account. Only 48% of Nigerians. The bankers said it themselves during COVID. When Nigerians say, no, me they share the COVID money for everybody account direct. So they go, we don't want palliative. Now don't forget, if they share the money direct, we don't trust them. They say they don't share money for everybody account because only 48% of Nigerians have bank account, bro. Now, no, it will be poverty. 
the things that those people need, those refinements, those people need education now, refinement. Now the vest for that one. Transportation refinement. Housing. To refine homelessness into housing. When you refine homelessness, it becomes housing. When you develop your housing sector, it means you have refined homelessness. People will get a place to stay. Affordable housing for everybody. All this refinement, we don't care. We don't talk that one. But because it is sheer love that ten thousand dollar. Hey, sir, now go to your house. Now make phone call. Twenty thousand dollar. Once they cry, everybody will come as a phone cry. Like in Nigeria, get problem. Nigeria don't get problem because now get problem. Nigeria don't get problem. But the millions, fifty-two percent of Nigerians who don't even get bank account. Fifty-two percent who don't even feel get bank account. Make all of us respect ourselves. Let's all we want refine. We want every we want the refinery. We want our refinery. Refine our nation. 